So, circles. They can be confusing. Hopefully I can make them less confusing. All right, what we're gonna talk about is uh, the area of a sector and the arc length of a circle and how to find them. All right, so this is something typically uh, taught at the end part of a geometry course in high school. So you'll be in about, I'm assuming, ninth or 10th grade at this point when you're introduced to this material. So what I'm gonna do is first talk about the equations for arc length and area of a sector because I think I, I talk about them in kind of a unique way, which I hope you know helps you understand why the equations work the way they do. Uh, and it's something I think, I, I haven't heard a lot of people describe them the way I, that I typically do. So uh, I'm gonna go through explaining what arc length is, how to find it, same thing for area of a sector. Then I'll go into practice problems. If you're looking for practice problems, uh, Go into my description, there's a timestamp for where in the video I'm specifically just doing examples, okay? So let's start with arc length. Okay, so arc length is essentially where you have a circle and you have this central angle, right? So here's the center of the circle and these two radii are intersecting the circle here. So what arc length does is it lets you find the distance along uh, this curved line here, this arc. Okay, and your equations are as such. You have two different equations depending on whether you're working in degree mode or whether you're working in radian mode, okay? Now, um, I'm not gonna talk about the difference between degrees and radians. There are basically two ways you can represent angle measure. Uh, you should be familiar with that at this point. Uh, so if you're working with degrees, if they give you your angle in degrees, your equation will be theta, which is the angle they give you, right? This opening could be however small or however large they make it. So it's theta over 360 times two pi r. If you're working in radians, it's theta over two pi times two pi r. Now, let me just talk about why the equation is kind of written the way it is and why these equations work. You should be familiar with just um, the circumference of a circle, right? The circumference of the circle is essentially, you know, it's a special name for what the perimeter of a circle is, the total distance all the way around. And what you're doing is you're not so much finding the circumference, you're finding the distance of just a small portion of the circumference, okay? So which is why if you notice these parts of the equation is just the equation for circumference. Circumference equals two pi r. Now, how do we scale it down right, to just being a specific part of the circumference. Well, we're essentially finding a percentage of it, right? You should have learned percentages in a previous class, maybe algebra or even like seventh grade stuff, uh, where when you take a percentage, that's part over total. The total number of degrees in a circle going all the way around is 360 or two pi, right, depending on whether you're in degrees or radians. And the specific part of it that you have is theta. Right? So you're essentially multiplying the circumference by a specific fraction to scale it down to just being this length, that arc length. Okay? Hopefully that made sense as to, you know, why the equations work the way they do. Uh, now to talk about area of a sector. Very similarly, right? So area of a sector is, uh, you have two radii like this, and rather than finding the distance around uh, between these two points on this curve, you're finding the space in between, right? The area of that sector. Now, you might have noticed that the equations up here contain the equations for area of a full circle. And then we're multiplying it by a specific fraction. The same kind of fraction here, where we're kind of like, looking for a percentage of the area. We're not looking for the area of everything, just the area of this part. Well, how large is that part? What portion of the circle is that small sector? Well, it's theta over 360 or theta over two pi, okay? So your equations for a sector, depending on whether you're in degrees or radians, is going to be theta over 360 times pi r squared 
and theta over 2 pi times pi r squared. All right. So hopefully that made sense. If there's any questions, just throw it in the comments and I can clarify. But that's why these equations work the way they do. Now let's jump into some uh, examples. So the first few examples I want to look at are those involving arc length. All right, and then after that, we'll go over those involving area of a sector. So this first problem, uh, and sometimes you'll be given a circle with the components labeled. Sometimes you'll just be given the measurements. Like this could have easily said theta equals 120 and radius equals 12 without even giving you the picture. All right, so we're given the circle. We're shown this is 120 degrees, and we're shown that this length from the center out to the outer edge, the radius, is 12. And we're asked to find the arc length. So we're no, we know we're dealing with arc length, so it's going to be one of these two equations. What determines which equation we use is, are we working in radians or degrees? Well, let's look at what they give us. Right here, they give us 120 degrees as our angle measure. So that means we're using this equation. Arc length is equal to uh, theta over 360 times 2 pi r. So we narrowed down the equation to use. So let's just fulfill that. Let's just write the equation down. Arc length equals theta over 360 multiplied by 2 pi r. Okay? Now from here, let's start filling in the information we have. We're looking for arc length. Okay, so uh, that's not given to us. We'll just continue to have that be AL for arc length. We're given theta, right? We're given the angle measure. So that's 120 degrees over 360. And that's multiplied by 2 times pi times R, which is the radius. And they give us the radius as being 12. And at this point, we just multiply everything together, okay? So uh, I'm gonna leave pi to the side, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna, you know, leave it in terms of pi. And when any question says, you know, leave it in terms of pi, or when your teacher says that, uh, it typically means you don't multiply it into it. You kind of leave it on the end the way you would a variable, right? Even though it's not a variable, it's a constant. It has a number associated with it. So uh, 120 times two times 12, will be uh, 2,880, 2,880 over 360 pi. And then simplifying that fraction, we get our final answer as being eight pi. Um, eight pi meters, right? Don't forget to, because uh, a lot of times you'll get points off for not having units, right? I remember, and I'm reminded about this a lot by my dad, even though I'm 25 years old and it was eighth grade, but uh, I lost like 20 points off a test that I should have gotten 100 on, because uh, I just, I didn't put units on any of my, uh, any of my questions. Um, but yeah, so that's super important. Now, you might be allowed to leave it in terms of eight pi, but some teachers will want you to multiply that out. All you have to do is you're typically allowed a calculator. You would need one for this. Uh, and you just hit eight times, and then there should be a button for putting in the constant pi. And then you'd get an approximate answer as a decimal. Um, all right, so now let's move on to the next question. So here, we're given a circle. Uh, we're shown this angle here, pi over six radians, where our uh, diameter is 22 meters. Okay, so we're asked to find arc length, so let's figure out which of the arc length equations we're using. What is our angle in? Well, they give us our angle in terms of like pi over six, which anytime your angle has pi in it, um, it's in radians. If it's in degrees, it will have this degrees symbol. Okay, so let's write down the equation for arc length in radians. Arc length is equal to uh, theta, over 2 pi multiplied by 2 pi r. Okay, now we fill in our information. Okay, do we know arc length? 
Nope, that's not given to us. It's actually the thing we need to find. Do we know theta? Well, theta is this angle measure. So we fill that in. That's pi over 6. Now, one thing I want to note, something you should be familiar with, is how to divide with fractions, right? How to deal with this, like, uh, compound fraction, I guess you could call it. But uh, I have, I have, there are a couple ways of dealing with it in this problem. So, and then um, multiplied by 2, multiplied by pi, and multiplied by r, which is 22 meters. Okay. Now, from here, I just have to simplify everything, condense it down. Uh, now, just basic rules with fractions, something you really should be familiar with at this point. These twos will cancel. This pi will cancel, leaving me with pi over 6 multiplied by 22. Then that leaves me with 22 pi over 6. And if I want to simplify the fraction, that would then equal 11 pi over 3 meters as my final answer. And like I said, if you're asked to fully multiply this out and get an approximate answer, you would just put this into the calculator. You have a symbol for computing pi exactly, and you'd get an approximate decimal answer. All right. Now let's move on to some slightly different examples still involving arc length. All right, so these next problems are a little bit different. Uh, so before we were asked to find arc length, here we're actually given arc length and asked to find a different value, which is something you'll be commonly asked to do, right? Sometimes you'll have an equation for volume or an equation for area or something like that. And what they'll do is they'll give you the area and ask you to use it to find some other quantity. Okay? So how do we do it in this case? So our first question shows us a circle. They give us our angle measure as being 135 degrees. And they give us our arc length of being 42. So how do we go about finding the radius? Well, it starts off very similar to our previous problems. We have our equations for arc length and we want to know which one to use. Since they give us our degree measure, since they give us our angle measure in degrees, rather, we have to use this version, the theta over 360 version. So let's start off by just writing down the formula. Arc length is equal to theta over 360 multiplied by 2 pi r. And just like before, we're going to fill in the values they give us. Last time they didn't give us arc length, but this time they do. So rather than just writing arc length, we're going to write 42 here, our given value. And that should be equal to theta over 360, which in this case is 135, okay, over 360 times 2 times pi and multiplied by r, which we're not given. Right, so I'll just leave that in terms of r as a variable. Okay, so what do we do next? Um, from here, we need to do some algebra, right? We need to get r alone. We need to isolate that variable. Something at this point you should be pretty familiar with. All right, so we need to bring everything over to the other side. So before we do that, I'm just going to combine like terms here. Right, I'm going to combine everything into the numerator. So I'm left with 42 is equal to 135 times 2 times pi times r uh, should then just be uh, 270 pi r over 360. Now what do we do next? All right. I want to get rid of the denominator here. So I multiply both sides by 360. Okay. So um, multiply that here, 360. Those cancel. Multiply this by 360. Whatever you do to one side, you do to the other. And what you should be left with is 15,120. And you'd be allowed a calculator to do this, I'm sure. but. You could also do this by hand, uh, is equal to 
270 pi r. Now I didn't leave myself enough room here. What I'm gonna do is just grab a separate sheet of paper to finish that off. All right, so just right here on the bottom, uh, what we're left with here is uh, 15, 120 is equal to 270 pi r. Now we divide by 270 pi to both sides. Right? And we're left with r is equal to uh, two, uh, 15, 120 divided by 270 is 56. And I'll leave it in terms of pi. Right? So our radius is 56 over pi meters. Now, I'm just going to, for the purposes of this example, uh, yeah, for the purposes of this example, I'm just going to uh, give you an approximate solution also, right? So you, you might have a graphing calculator, right? This is just a scientific. You would just put in uh, all right, 56 divided by, and then you typically have a symbol for pi for getting an approximate solution, right? So R approximately equals... 17.825 meters, right? So depending on what your question uh, is asking or what the teacher is asking you to do, you might want this one here in terms of pi or this approximate solution. All right, so now let's look at our last example for arc length. The next examples we go through will be area of a sector. So here, we're asked to find the degrees in radians, right? Theta in terms of radians, with an arc length being seven pi and a radius being 14 meters. So this should be pretty familiar with you, uh, pretty familiar at this point. Our equation for arc length in radians, because that's what they're asking us to do, is going to be arc length is equal to theta over two pi multiplied by two pi r. And from there, we plug in our information. We're given uh, arc length, which is seven pi. We're not given theta, so I'm just gonna leave that as theta. And that's over two pi. And now that's multiplied by two times pi, multiplied by r, which is 14. 14. Okay, now from here, we just do some algebra. I'm gonna cancel out these terms, right? The idea is to get theta alone, and I'm left with seven pi equals theta multiplied by 14, and then I divide by 14 on both sides. And theta, my angle measure, is equal to pi over two radians. All right, so that's it for arc length. Now let's look at some examples of area of a sector. All right, so like before, we're given circles, uh, and we're asked to, rather than find arc length, we're asked to find area of a sector, okay? So for this first circle, uh, we're given this circle, we're given this angle measured here of 240 degrees, and we're, giving a ra we're given a radius of 12. And the uh, area we're trying to find is the area here, okay? So what do we do? It's very similar to the method from before of uh, figuring out the arc length. We look at our equations. We have two options for area of a sector. We're given the uh, angle measure in terms of degrees, so we use the degrees equation. So let's just put that in. Area of a sector should be equal to theta, over 360 multiplied by pi r squared. Now that we have the equation written down, we go about substituting in our information. What is our angle? Uh, what is our area? We don't know that, so that just stays as a. What is theta? Theta is 240 over 360 uh, times pi, which is just a constant, it's just a number. And then radius squared. Our radius is 12. And then we have to square it. So now let's just go about combining everything and simplifying everything down. So uh, area is equal to 
240 over 360 multiplied by pi multiplied by 144. And then multiplying this out, you would get area is equal to 240. Or sorry, not 240. Uh, it would be 240 times 144, which is 3, 4, 5, 6, 0. 34,560 uh, over 360 pi. And then finally, simplifying it down, we get the area is 96 pi. Okay, now let's look at this next problem. So I'm just going to grab another piece of paper because we're not going to have enough room to do the full calculation of this here. So let's look at the circle we are given, right? So we have a circle here, our angle is 3 pi over 4, while our radius is 32. All right, so again, same thing. We're given our degrees in radians, so we're going to use this version of the formula, the uh, theta over pi over 2. So area is equal to theta over uh, 2 pi. It was, I might have said theta over pi over 2. I meant theta over 2 pi. Um, multiplied by pi r squared. Okay? So now again, we put in our information. We don't know our area, but we do know theta. Theta is 3 pi over 2. Uh, sorry, 3 pi over 4. And that's all over 2 pi. Multiplied by pi. And then multiplied by r squared. Our radius is 32, so it's going to be multiplied by 32 squared. Now there are a couple of ways you can simplify this, right? You know, you could do things in a few different orders, uh, but I'm just going to go through the first things that I see. So I think from here you can easily eliminate this, these two uh, pi terms, right? And you're going to have 3 pi over 4 divided by a larger 2. Okay? Um, and from here, uh, 32 squared, that's going to be um, 1,024. Okay? So that's going to be multiplied by 1,024. And now I'm just going to multiply this the way I would multiply fractions, right, to get the 1,024 combined with this. So I have a single compound fraction, right? So multiplying these two together, I end up with 3,072 pi over 4 all over 2. Now, I want to convert this, right? I have, you know, this compound fraction. I want to get it to one fraction. What I'm essentially doing is dividing this uh, thir uh, 3,072 pi over 4, I'm dividing it by 2. Now, when you're dividing by fractions, it's the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. Okay? So, 3,072 uh, 3, pi over 4 multiplied by 2. Uh, by 1 over 2. Sorry. Right? And then after you multiply it out, and simplify, you get a final answer of 384 pi. Okay? Now let's look at some different types of examples where you're given uh, the area of the sector and asked to find a different quantity. And here are the final problems we'll be going over. So number three, right here, uh, shows us a circle. Uh, we're told the area here is 17 pi, and the radius is 9 meters. We need to find theta, this angle measure, in radians. So, by now this uh, method, the, the step should be, you know, super simple, very straightforward. We'll start out with the equation. So, since we're dealing with area in radians, we're using the uh, theta over 2 pi. 
okay? Uh, that's multiplied by pi times r squared. And then we fill in the information. We're given area 17 pi. And we're given, uh, we're not given theta, right? So I'll just leave that as theta for us to solve. It's over 2 pi, and it's multiplied by pi times r squared, which is 9 squared. So now we have to multiply all this out, and then eventually we're going to isolate theta algebraically. Right? Again, you should be really familiar with how to do these, uh, do, do something with this. So I'm going to cancel out the pi. 17 pi is equal to theta over 2, and I'm going to square the 9 and get 81. Uh, now from here, I'll write it out as 17 pi is equal to 81 theta over 2. And now what I do is I multiply by 2 to both sides, getting me 34. Uh, right? Yeah, 34. Um, 34 pi, and that's equal to 81 times theta. And I divide by 81 to both sides. And what I end up with is 34 pi over 81 radians is equal to theta. Simple as that. Okay? Now let's go on to our very last example. Here, we're given area as 204 pi. We're given angle measure of 170. We need to find what the radius is, right? We need this length. Let's go into our equation. Area is equal to theta over, what is our angle measure? Uh, it's in degrees, so we're gonna use 360. Multiplied by pi r squared. And now we fill in our information, right? 204 pi is equal to 170 over 360 multiplied by pi multiplied by r squared, which is, oh, which is unknown. We don't know what r is. Okay. Uh, now what do we do? We'll let's just start multiplying stuff out, canceling. We need to isolate r. We can clearly see the, the pi's on both sides cancel out. So 204 is equal to 170 r squared over 360. We're going to multiply 360 to both sides, and that gets us 73,440 is equal to 170 r squared. Okay. Uh, dividing by 170 to both sides, right. uh, that gets us... Uh, 432 is equal to r squared. And I'm going to write the rest on the side here, just because I ran out of room. Uh, so that's 432 is equal to r squared. Now what do we do to get rid of the, square, uh, the, the power of 2? We square root both sides. So this cancels and just leaves us with r. And we get the square root of 432. Now, most likely, you're going to be asked to put this in at least like radical form, right? You're going to be asked to reduce the radical, which is something you should be familiar with from last year, from Algebra 1. Uh, and that's going to end up getting you, um, like the, uh, if I want to just write it here to the side, the 432 splits up into a 144 and a rad 3. And one and rad 144 is just 12. So, reducing square root of 432 should get us 12 rad 3 is equal to r. And that is our final answer. Okay? So, just to review, right? Um, What's important to know is the equations for arc length and area. Uh, if you know the equations for circumference and general area of a circle, it should be pretty easy, right? You just, for arc length, it's 2 pi r times theta over, depending on what you're working with, 360 over 2 pi, right? 
you're multiplying um, theta over the total degrees in a circle to the circumference. Similar thing for area of a sector. This is the equation for the area of an entire circle, pi r squared, and you're multiplying theta over the total amount of degrees in a circle, right? Total angle measure in a circle, which is 360 or 2 pi, depending on whether you're working in radians or degrees, all right? When encountered with a question uh, where you're asked to find area of a sector or arc length, or maybe you're given that and asked to find something else, the standard method, right? This is step one, write the equation. Step two, fill in uh, your given information. So if they give you radius and uh, your angle measure, fill those in. If you're given arc length and radius, fill those in. Just fill in the given information. Step three, solve algebraically for the unknown variable. And that's pretty much it, all right? Uh, if there are any questions, throw it down in the comments. But other than that, I mean, that's pretty much it.